Good morning. So let's go ahead and start off day two. Day two, we're going to talk about navigating the new normal, land, housing, insurance, and public policy in the age of climate change. Um, but before we get started, I did want to point out that our board president, Judy Coffey, is in the house today. She'll be presenting. Thank you. Um, Judy is a powerhouse. There is nothing like being a female leader and having another really wonderful female leader to help you navigate everything that that means in the world and having people like lift you up. And I, I've, it's been a wonderful four years having her at the helm of uh, Rebuild North Bay and then after the fire. It's been um, pivotal for me um, to become more comfortable in my vision and be able to execute it. And I love the fact that Judy has always said to me, you know, Jen, I'm an operationalist, not a visionary. So what do you want to do? Just tell me how you're going to do it. And I'm like, thank you. I need that kind of grounding. So I'm very happy that Judy is here this year. Last year she was traveling. So if you have a moment, please do go up and say um, hi to her. So very appreciative of all of her um, support and leadership. So um, today we're going to get into some of the more of the hard infrastructure issues in some ways about you know, what we need to do in the future and from starting now and what I wish starting 10 years ago is think about uh, climate resilient housing for all, for everyone, which means how do we make that more affordable? How do we navigate our, how do we mitigate our wild lands? How do we deal with insurance? Because right now we're in this really terrible spot where so many insurance companies are actually uh, leaving the market or they're willing to come back into the market in California as of this week, as long as they are able to raise their rates between um, zero and 200% with an average of 30%. And so that is a deal that they struck with the state of California. Um, my concern is that means that people in rural California and frontier California will be hit with really high, high, high rates. And if you have a vacation home, maybe you can afford that. But a lot of people who live in rural and frontier America don't have that. So. All right, so the thing I wanted you to think about today is um, I'm going to start every day with a quote. For those of you who weren't yesterday, I started with another quote, which is, I have the nerve to walk my own way, however hard, in my search for reality, rather than climb upon the rattling wagon of wishful illusions. It's my favorite author, Zora Neale Hurston. Um, was she talking about climate change? No, she wasn't, but she was super brave at a time when that was very, very hard to be brave. Um, and... And it's hard right now to be brave, and a lot of people want to live in wishful thinking, and I totally understand why, but everyone in this room in some way has already confronted the fact that wishful thinking just isn't going to get us through. And so when people talk about resiliency and um, sustainability, I'm always like, how? Okay, but how? How are we in equity? But how? But what does that mean exactly? Because all of those terms mean something different according to which community is in front of you. How do they need help? And then also listening to the community in front of you so you can actually design and support them in the ways that are relevant, not in the ways that you think should be imposed upon them. And those are very different ways of looking at the subject. I would like to note that this is my cousin, um, my mom's cousin, so my second cousin, Gary Jones. And he is walking um, through, this is a month after the Woolsey fire, and I took this photo. And this is Ray's National Forest in uh, Malibu Canyon off of Mulholland. And this is um, right after the Woolsey Fire where he lost his home. Uh, he was a homesteader of 30 years. And so they're, it, they've just finished rebuilding. It's been uh, almost five years because it was the same day as the campfire. One of the things that I love about this photo is, even though that looks kind of terrible, where he's leading me, because his land um, actually borders Ray's National Forest, he was like, Jen, come with me. And he put me in one of those terrifying little trek things. I don't know what they are. And um, then he walked me into what was a very um, overgrown forest before. And he's like, you can't tell anybody. Now I can tell you because you wouldn't be able to find it because it's all overgrown again. He's walking me into an area where he, even though he'd lived there for 30 years, he'd never seen it because it had so much poison oak and berry bushes and it was overgrown. And the fire then revealed all of these um, original Native American dance circles and land places where they lived and their tools. And so all he did was tell the academics so they could come and study it and nobody else in the public could know. And it was the first time for me that I saw that um, fire could also reveal things that were beautiful in something that looks like a very scarred landscape. And so um, this is also like, you can live in the reality of it. It doesn't have to all be 
living in an ashtray. It can also be that things are beautiful that come from it, like having an, having all of you here in the same room together. Having 50% of you are from wildfire communities. I'm super proud of that. I feel like that is um, right at the basis of our values at After the Fire, and so um, something to think about for today. All right, so we're going to start today with Julie Shai Woodard. Um, I was really excited to invite her. She was like, Jen, are you sure? Because her expertise is really in wind and rain, but she's been doing this really cool program for years, about a dozen years, she'll tell you about it, called um, Fortified Home. And she does, she works with IBHS, or I'm sorry, Smart Home America, but she does Fortified Roofs, which uh, I wish Tim Carpenter was here from Fannie Mae because he loves that, shows me his sign all the time. But one of the things that's really cool about Julie is that she can take the concept and turn it into the how you actually do it. And she's been very successful. And um, she works very closely with our next keynote right after her, with Alistair Watts from IBHS. But so much about the actual how of how to get this done. And so when Julie was, I was like, please do come because I know, I, I traveled with her in Colorado. I know how determined she is and passionate. And I'm very excited to have her. And please welcome Julie. <laughs> 